It's a beautiful day in Arizona. You'll notice that my driveway is missing something. My Heimer Active is currently at the dealers being repaired. One of the lithium batteries failed. And so that is being replaced. So in the meantime, it's beautiful weather and I'm bored. So I stopped at an RV show today and I'll show you what I found. So what I found at the RV show were three models of the Regency National Traveler and you'll notice that that is built on a Ram Promaster chassis. Um, and we're actually looking at this particular one. This is the ultra high roof that I walked through. I was actually really impressed with the amount of clearance inside the van because of the additional uh, roof height. Um, but it is built on a Ram Promaster chassis. This particular model is the upscale, uh, higher trim version. And I can walk through some of the interior and go through some of the specifications compared to what we have. This is built on the 3500 chassis uh, compared to the 2500 on my Active 1.0. So it is a little longer like the Active 2.0 and it has the ultra high roof and some additional features. So we can go into that here. Okay, first we have a quick walk around the outside of the Regency National Traveler Ultra High Roof Edition. You can see it's colored similarly to my Heimer Active 1.0 with the white paint and black graphics. The doors open completely like ours do. It does have nice black wheels. It's a nice touch. And here we're looking at my white Heimer Active 1.0. The first thing you may notice is that the Regency has body color painted bumper and side trim where on the active it is unpainted black plastic both on the front and over the wheel wells and side protection. So other than that and a few other things like the Erwinheimer logo on the front and the solid running boards it's difficult to tell these vans from each other from the outside. Once we go inside the differences are a little more noticeable. So as we walk through the Heimer active take note of the dashboard as well as the location and style of the bed in the back. The Heimer has the fold down Murphy bed and the light colored cabinetry in a kind of a European style versus the darker wood and white trim of the Regency. This has two level storage in the rear. Again the dark wood cabinetry and the dual sofa bed that folds out into a single bed. Looking in the bathroom, it does have a full wet bath, except there is no sink inside, but it is fully enclosed. Up front in the lounge, we do have a bench seat, although it is missing seat belts. Up in the cockpit, it is the higher trim level with the wood trim and steering wheel controls and the seat belts on the seats. Some nice overhead storage and the controls for the equipment inside. The Regency has the button up screen and a similar galley to the Active with the white countertop. It actually has the same refrigerator. The flip out extra portion of the countertop is nice. Walking back to the back, it also has a screen in the back that buttons on and zips down. The leather on the couches is nice, but I can see that the seams are probably going to be an issue if you're trying to sleep on it without a topper. Now back in the active, you can see the identical refrigerator as we just saw in the Regency. The dark colored countertop. And the glass covers for the stove and sink. We have the Murphy bed back in the back that folds up, so it is not a dual couch like the Regency has. And looking further back, you'll notice that the air conditioner is visible in the active where it was hidden inside the Regency. Next we move on to the model that is more comparable to the active with the roof line. 
This model has different fabric and you'll also notice a different colored cabinetry and the air conditioner is also visible in this model where in the ultra high roof it was not. And as we move back into the bedroom it's laid out just like the other one with the dual couch set up. And as we head back up to the bathroom you notice that it is a dual wooden door set up rather than glass. It doesn't open completely because of the couch cushion there. And the bathroom itself is basically the same. It does have a curtain because of the wood doors but otherwise it's the same equipment and once again there's no sink inside. So we'll just close the bathroom doors and move back up front. Again, the same wood cabinetry with white trim. Controls for the equipment. They're asking just under $82,000 for this model. Here's the screen again, and it just buttons up over the opening. Again, nice overhead storage and the max fan in the center of the lounge area. This is the third model they had on display with the lower trim level. It does have a different colored leather for the couches and the bed. This model does have the dark wood cabinetry. It felt a little darker in here than the other ones, just overall. You see this one does have the glass door for the bathroom, overhead storage, nice windows, nice shelving. Bathroom is basically the same. Again, no sink. So what's my takeaway here? Well, I tend to look at other models fairly often just because I find it interesting to look at what other manufacturers are doing with their vans. Um, and whenever I do, I always come away thinking how much I really appreciate the Heimer Active overall and its feature set. I really appreciate the layout, the floor plan, the front lounge area, the Murphy bed. Those are all things that I really enjoy about the Active. Um, the bathroom is definitely a weak point. I did like the bathroom in the Regency, especially the one with the glass door, being able to stand inside in an enclosed space and not have wooden doors to worry about. And it had a proper shower as well. So that's definitely a plus. That's one of the things that we are missing in ours. And hopefully we can come up with some sort of solution for that. But otherwise, um, I always come away feeling like I made the right choice. It's a very nimble and easy to drive van to begin with. The three Regency models that we just looked at are all on the longer version of the van. So they're all 20 feet, 11 inches long. So about a foot and two inches longer than the Heimer Active 1.0 and identical in length to the 2.0. I do wish that the bed in the Heimer was able to be a little lower. I know that it's not really possible given that's where some of the storage and electronics equipment is housed, but the, the lower bed in the Regency and other models that use the sofa bed, the active included, make it easier to get in and out of the bed. That said, the sofa bed style where you have multiple pieces of couch coming together, I can tell that the seams are going to be an issue and it would kind of require that you carry a mattress topper, which just means that you're carrying around another piece of equipment that's taking up room and that you have to deal with. So all that said, um, the other thing that the Regency did have was the ultra high roof model and the clearance inside was amazing. Um, if you're a taller traveler, I would definitely take a look at that. I don't think that the active can compete with, uh, with that feature um, if it's something that you need. Now, that doesn't apply to the bedroom, obviously. The bed is the same or approximately the same size, but for standing height and for moving around inside the van, um, it's 
hard to beat if you're a, a taller person. Um, so that's something to consider. Otherwise, the Heimer and the Regency are both comparably priced. They seem to have similar feature sets, and other than the ultra high roof of the one model of Regency, um, they are very similar overall. So it really comes down to how you're going to use it and the things that are the most important to you. If you prefer the couch in the back over the Murphy bed, you have that option in the Heimer as well. If you prefer a larger, more functional shower area, then you have to look at the Regency. I hope this was helpful. If you're in the market for a Class B, maybe this helped you make a decision. Or maybe it was just interesting to see what another manufacturer is doing on the same platform. Either way, thanks for watching. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe. And I will see you next time. Have a great day.